This week on CrossFeed, Nude Angel Saves Puppies, Jesus Paid for Your Sins, and Parking Tickets, Michelle Bachman's Faith, The Grinch in Connecticut, and Trumping the Bible. Welcome, everybody, to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio, near Cleveland. Near the snow belt. I'm Pastor Jim Butler at St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Dedham, Massachusetts, just outside Boston, where we also got our share of snow this week. Oh, we got nothing for snow. I mean, like, we got a dusting last night. That's it. You know, we moved from, uh, I was I was in Iowa. All right, and then we're coming here. Everyone's going, "Oh, you're going to get lots of snow there." Iowa got hammered. Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin, Madison, where, um, you know, where I lived most of my life, there, they, the university shut down, canceled all classes today for the first time in history. Us, we got, I mean, literally a dusting. That's it. <laughs> Uh, it looks to me like you guys are going to get a lot of lake effect there. But I was watching the 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 um, the radar yesterday. It looked like part of your place. Was, it's part of Ohio. There must be the other side of Cleveland. Yeah. getting it closer. Other up side to of Cleveland gets it real bad, but we don't. Okay, we're just yeah. like you know, it's it's it. You just go a little bit further because we're on the west side of Cleveland, so um, so we don't get it as bad. Okay. Now I was at the um, and we got a. Maybe about three or four inches of snow on Sunday, and then we got a, about three inches yesterday. So, um, anyway. Wait, I've got a question. All right. I need everybody be ready with the pause button, okay? Because here's what I'm, I'm tra- taking a sort of informal poll. All right. Um, now, you know, Christmas you can abbreviate with, um, well, in, in English, an X which is actually a chi. It's the first letter in Christ um, in uh, in Greek, mm. right? So, which is what the New Testament was written in. And so, so that's actually where that comes from. It's not, you know, trying to take Christ out of Christmas or anonymous or something like that. That's It was Christians were the first ones to actually use the chi um, at the beginning of Christmas as, a, as an abbreviation. And so here's my question, all right? Because I always abbreviate it that way. In fact, if I'm writing, if if I'm actually like writing it out by hand, I actually make a little Cairo, which people that aren't familiar with it, it's like the X and P on top of each other. Um, but uh, but if if I'm typing, you, I mean, there's no key for that, and so yeah. um, so I just do a capital X. And um, so I was kind of. Um, getting hit by a little bit of disdain um, over the past week or so uh, by somebody on Twitter because I was doing that. And he said, well, that's all fine and good if you're talking to somebody who's Greek, but, you know, there's a war on Christmas and and stuff like that. And so here's what I want to know, all right? Our listeners and viewers, send us, I want to know, how do you, if you need to abbreviate Christmas, uh, whether because you're like texting, you got to keep it under the 140 character limit, or uh, if you're just, you know, trying to write fast or whatever, if you're going to abbreviate it, how do you abbreviate it? Do you do it with an X? Do you do it with just like a C M A S or 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 what? What do you do? So and and why? All right. Do you, do you think that? Uh, you know, do you think it's better to do it one way or the other? Do you do it just out of habit or what? So if you're watching this on a um, like YouTube or one of the other video sharing sites, just leave a comment. Um, you can send uh, email to podcast at crossfeednews.com or you can um, or you can you can catch me on Twitter. Twitter name is Crossfeed News. Uh, so I want to know how do you um, how do you abbreviate it? How do you do it, Jim? If you don't mind me asking, I use the letter X. Okay. Is it just because you're a Greek snob? <laughs> no, I just thought a lot of people understood. It's put the put. They don't know what the X stands for, but they know it's a a, a um, abbreviation for Christmas. 
I mean, my mom wasn't a Greek snob, and but she, uh, I remember when I was in, like, since five or six or seven years old, she told me, yeah, you can put an X there, and that's an abbreviation for, for, for the first part, for Christmas. Okay. She didn't know why it was, but she knew it was. <laughs> okay. So she saw it. She saw it as being Christmas. She she didn't think anything else of it. All right. So. Okay, cool. All right. So, uh, let's see. Speaking of Christmas and, and trying to take uh, Christ out of Christmas, let's go to Connecticut. The town of Waterbury, um, home of uh, St. John Lutheran Church, Pastor Martin Kiesel. Um, doubt if Marty watches this, but if he does, Marty, I just gave your church a shout-out, okay? Driven through Waterbury several times. Very hilly town. Uh, um, right there along the river. Well, but all these hills right there. Uh, anyway, so there's this uh, one school. Okay, this is not the whole school district. There is one school in the district. And the principal, a guy named Eric Brown, says has reported all religious festivi- festivities and decora- many decorations in the classroom. Um, and that's, you know, psh. he says... Um, uh, uh, um, concentrate, Pinky, concentrate. The public school cannot knowingly exclude children. So this is not a church. It's a school. It's a public school. We have to do things to include every child. So we celebrate winter. Hey, bud. <laughs> this party. So if you like winter, too bad. We're going to exclude you. <laughs> now, if you don't like winter, too bad. Or, well, isn't that what? Okay, that's what I meant. <laughs> I knew what you meant. I just clarified. So. All right. So um, the superintendent said uh, that they're trying to celebrate the holidays without religious overtones, uh, separation of church and state. And um, I, I'm trying to make sense of this article because um, uh, Brown at, the, at Walsh Elementary says – that um, songs celebrating Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa will be sung at their winter celebration on December 21st. As in previous years, presents will be given to students. So, um, the and the superintendent said it's possible to acknowledge, teach about each holiday as it approaches, provided there's a balance and equality in approach with no one religion receiving any special consideration. As long as the line's not crossed between teaching about a holiday and endorsing the religion... This is acceptable, but no public school should promote any religious observance. If you want to be a party animal, you have to learn to live in the jungle. He's absolutely right. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the problem is here. <laughs> Why this made the news. I I, I don't know. Um, I mean, because they, you know, he said, you know, they, they have this, this winter celebration and they... Um, now, I don't know. I don't know if they sing Rudolph's Red-Nosed Reindeer or if they sing Silent Night. I mean, you know, maybe... That might be a, a, an ob- a worth objection, you know. Um, the the uh, the teachers union president, uh, uh, um, well, she couldn't reach her comment, but said neither she nor union officials at Walsh Elementary ever received complaints related to it. Uh, she told the paper down there, the Republican American. Uh, I don't know where that uh, complaint came from. Yeah. So. It, it's Supposedly, it was one teacher and get the one parent, and it made the national news. <laughs> so okay, it made Fox News. <laughs> I, I, I seriously doubt that this ended up on any of the other ones. This is definitely a a Foxism. I mean, I haven't checked to see if it showed up anywhere else, but it just. It just kind of struck me that no, okay, different school districts are different. Um, I, I was just at the uh, the holiday concerts um, here in town uh, for the middle school, and while it's called a holiday concert, the place is decorated for Christmas, you know, with um, reindeer and you know that kind of thing. Um, and uh, but the songs they did, they did some wintery kind of stuff. And they did, um, I don't know, like, Oh, Come All You Faithful or something, you know, a, f- a few songs like that. They were definitely Christian, um, you know, Gloria and Excelsis Deo kind of stuff. And um, 
And and there there were no Hanukkah or Kwanzaa songs. There may be, uh, you know, this is my first year here. There may be mm-hmm. other years, um, but they didn't sort of go out of their way to make sure that they were all equal. No, ma'am. We're musicians. So I, so yeah, far, see, I haven't heard any complaints about it either. See, Dale wants to know if I do the Xmas thing because I'm a Greek snob. He does his excel- glory at Excelsius Dale because he's a Latin snob. <laughs> Oh, you're Just talking to a guy that wrote an article when I was at the seminary for the student paper, or wrote a letter to the editor uh, that said uh, something to the effect of, uh, "All you guys out there that um, that think you're better than than us, the rest of us, because you know Latin and German, right? Um, you know, or don't think you're better than us because we only know two dead languages." An insufferable know-it-all. Yeah, because so. everybody knows German to that language. Anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> Talking about Latin. <laughs> so, uh, it... Uh, now, up here, I now I, I don't know what they... I, I, you know, my kids weren't in choir or anything. I know when my wife used to work in Springfield. Um, you know, they did a you know a song about the dreidel, but they also did um, uh, more, you know, Christmas-type music. Uh, these are these choirs from schools come in where she... The, the mall where she, her bank was, and they, you'd hear them singing down the hall and stuff. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I'm reading this from from the article. It sounds like he's handling it rather well. Right. Uh, I mean, maybe they don't decorate the, you know, maybe they don't put ornaments up in the, the, um, the hall, the classrooms. Maybe they put just snowflakes up in the classroom. But I'm thinking about when I was a kid. I remember, you know, doing that in December. You know, making little snowflake things and folding up the paper and cutting it out and hanging those in the classrooms. Because when I was in elementary school, we did, um, well, a lot of it was, you know, kind of Santa stuff and, and, and that. Well, and, uh, you know, Santa, that that's actually something that I wonder about. Okay, Santa, is that really, um, yeah, St. Nicholas, Christian pastor, but Santa, as he's understood in modern times, really, you know, you don't really get that. And, um and uh, so is that is the the sort of Santa aspect of Christmas um, really a religious thing? I would contend that it's not. Um, that you know, I I always say that we celebrate two different holidays on December twenty fourth and twenty fifth. They both happen to be called Christmas, but they really don't have a whole lot to do with each other. Not really. Now, there's the secular Christmas, and there's the religious Christmas. I knew a guy, I, I, I know I've said this before, who was an atheistic Jew, and he celebrated Christmas. You know, <laughs> put the tree up, sent out cards, you know, whole nine yards. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, my brother came over for Christmas Eve. You know, we had a dinner together, a big, you know, ham dinner. You know, I'm like, okay, you know, oh, that's right. you're an atheist Jew. Got to remember that. But he and I were good friends. A lot of Jews celebrate Christmas. Yeah. So, Okay. Well, of course, now if we're going to celebrate this this Christian Christmas, we only can go by what the Bible says. Um, but maybe the Bible is not really the final authority. Mm. All right. So we've got, it's actually two different articles. Um, it started out as one, but then there is an update. And uh, I was talking about Bishop Mark Hansen, the head of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And... Um, the original article quoted him. Um, he was actually quoting somebody, uh, or sort of speaking on behalf of other pastors within the ELCA. Um, not actually quoting anyone per se, but um, he said uh, the actual quote from Hansen is: um, he was asked. Where is there anything other than rejection of homosexual contact, conduct within the Bible? And he said, While some Lutherans cite those scriptures, there are others who say the understanding we have of homosexuality today does not seem to be reflected at all in the context of the biblical writers. So let us bring our understanding of sexual orientation that has been opened up to humankind over the years to this conversation. Right. In other words... Well, the Bible doesn't speak in favor of it, so we need to go with the modern understanding of it instead of the Bible's understanding of it. 
right? So he's being diplomatic here, and he's saying, well, I didn't say that. I was just speaking, you know, saying that other people say that. Right. Um, however, he uh, also said, God is still speaking to us, which basic, which is, uh, you know, which should, well, if they're in fellowship with the UCC, so it makes sense because the other ones who said God is still, you know, don't put a period where God's put a comma, God's still speaking. You know, so in other words, you really can't take scripture for what it is. Um, you know, the reality is, I mean, you know, but he did not also did, did not say, but I think their position is wrong. Right. Yeah. He, uh, he kind of left himself very ambiguous. And, right. uh, uh, his spokesman said, well, he's, he, he, he's, you know, uh, um, quoting that view without necessarily espousing it. Well, the next question is then, what dost thou espouse? <laughs> right. You know, you know, I mean, you know, Mary was Joseph's espoused wife. So what is thou espoused position? Right. Yeah. You know, this is what false doctrine in the Christian church. If you're not against it, you know, it's that sort of uh, if you if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. You know, especially when you are the leader of the largest Lutheran church body in the United States and also the head of the Lutheran World Federation. You know, you're in a position of influence where you need to take a firm stand. Right? He's not. It makes him more popular, and you end up being a right. people pleaser. Yep, so this is where the important and the key thing is to say, to sit back and say, here is the word. You know, this is what it says, whether we like it or not. Right. But, um, you know, but he doesn't, he, you know, he's been trying to be very diplomatic because, well, there's this little issue there called money. Well, there's this little issue called core. <laughs> the, I mean, the ELCA is falling apart. And, um, you know, there's. it seems like every week I see another article about another ELCA ch church leaving. I mean, they're falling apart faster the, than the Anglican Communion. So. And, and I just happened to notice today on the message boards at the wonderful uh, American Lutheran Publicity Bureau that uh, at least one synod in the ELCA the uh, uh, which one is it here um, uh, Pacifica Synod says they're giving down by 15 to 20 percent hmm. imagine the that congregations. yeah um, <clears throat> you know so yeah it's that's uh not a real good thing. Um, you know, by the way, once again, if you are not a subscriber to Lutheran Forum and Forum Letter from the American Lutheran Publicity Bureau, and you want to know what's going on within the ELCA, you really need to be. Um, they just had what I considered when, in the November issue, what I considered one of the best commentaries on the ELCA's decision uh, by an LCMS pastor said, well, have we ever considered temple prostitution? You know, if you really want to look at the scripture, you know, and, and the stuff that says it's bad, you really need to understand it. Besides, what's the one demographic hurting in the church today? Young men. This would take care of that issue. <laughs> yeah, we could, Did you, you know, get we that get, issue? I haven't had a chance to read it yet. It's sitting on my desk. But <laughs> oh, you need to read it. We could get, like, you know. We could get Tiger Woods as our spokesperson. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I never thought of that advantage. <laughs> be our new, um, uh, um, um, be our new, uh, celebrity spokesperson there for Lutherans. Hey, I just never. <laughs> Tiger Woods saw Santa. Yeah. yeah. Tiger went to go see Santa and Santa said, ho, ho, ho. And he said, where, where, where? Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> Oh boy, we're going down the bus. I I do need to say that um you know this 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 stuff that's going on um in the LCA, you know, we talk about it a lot, but 
I'm we're kind of joking about it and stuff like that a little bit, but understand that I don't I'm not celebrating this. I'm I'm not celebrating that they're having these problems. All right. Um I, I have to no Schaden no Schaden Freda from us. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you German snob. Yes, no, what is <laughs> that language? <laughs> um so but no, I mean I you know, and I've said this before that you know, our hearts really go out to the the people, um, both the lady and the pastors and the ELCAs, they try to uh, slog through all this stuff. I mean, from our perspective, it seems, you know, very clear and obvious and, and that. And, um, but I mean, at the same time, there's the question of if you're in the middle of it, what do you do? You know, I, I was talking to a ELCA pastor that's at a church plant and he says, you know, I don't agree with the direction that the ELCA is going, but, um, if we turn our backs on them now, we're done because we're depending on them for funding. Right. And and if you're in a mission church and want to leave, you have to repay all your money that they've given you. That's one of the rules. So, yeah. by the way, for those of you who don't know, understand the dead language, Schadenfreude is rejoicing at another's misfortune. That's what it means. So, it, it's kind of an English thing, though. Too. I mean, it's a German expression, but it's it's yeah. it's one of those idioms that's used in. So. <laughs> But, uh, you know, here's, here's a um, question, though. Um, I mean, if homosexuality is okay, and, you know, it doesn't say, maybe, maybe nude angels are okay, too. That's what the ELCA needs is their celebrity spokesperson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joanna uh, Krupa, or I, I'm, yeah. sure out of, I'm guessing on the pronunciation of her name. Yeah. Um, other than it's, it's Krupa, but so Krupa sounds probably my guess. Yeah, okay. We don't we don't really know much about models and stuff. Okay, uh, especially not you know, Playboy except models. for up here, it's uh, Geisel Budikin, whatever her name is, who hangs around with Tom Brady. You know, so uh, oh, whatever her name is, my wife says it's Gazelle. Isn't Gazelle. that the girl from um, uh, Amy Adams play Gazelle? <laughs> Isn't that like what time? Oh, gets out. Meet? Like the animal. Okay. Well, anyway, so back to jo- Johanna Krupa, who, by the way, claims to be a faithful Catholic. Um, <laughs> Even though she's a Playboy model. Well, she says she. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. Look, and a practicing Catholic. You have to remember, it's yeah, it's like the the woman set up here. The Pope has his views, and I have my views, and I'm just as good a Catholic as he is, okay? Yeah, so, And everybody likes viewing her. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be. All right. So if if you're watching the video, um, I kind of blocked out part of the image um, because I just I didn't want our show, you know, and, and some image on our show to be, uh, you know, uh, lead to temptation for somebody. I mean, she's sort of covered up. Right, she's she's standing there nude, but she's holding this cross in front of her that covers up. I, I like how they word it here in the uh, um, that it says a cross is strategically placed to cover her modesty. It, it covers those three points, but just barely. Right, I, I I thought modesty seemed to be an awkward word to use here to cover her modesty. There ain't no modesty in that picture. I'm sorry, but um. I mean, yeah. okay, I like her thing about adopting homeless animals, mm-hmm. okay? My pit bull was adopted from a um, shelter. Uh, our lab was rescued from underneath a, um, uh, a garage, a, a shed where uh, this dog had given birth. Okay, but this picture is just... Is, is everything short of sacrilegious? It's highly insulting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this other, uh, and and there's other one. She's topless, holding this dog, and you see it on the side, and she's holding a rosary. That, I, mean, I thought that that was just creepy. I, I, mean, I mean, it is. It's. I mean, it's. it's like you the know, first one I, feel... I saw it, and I'm like, ah, dude, what do you? It's like in a church and everything, and and then the other one is, um, yeah, like I'm sorry, but. Uh, topless with a dog. I I don't like where that's going. You know, I mean, this is, it's nasty. I mean, I actually made a point 
since I print out my stories, I, I didn't want to look at the pictures. So, I mean, you can see here, I just, I copied and pasted it into a text editor and so that I wouldn't have the pictures because I didn't want to see it. Um, but I, I'm sorry, but in our society, um, as, as much as I think that it's important to do what we can to, you know, protect animals and, and stuff like that. And I, I mean, I, I do agree, like Jim said, um, at the same time, porn's a bigger problem in our society than what's happening to animals. All right. It's, it's having a much greater negative impact on our culture, on our society, on marriages, on families, you name it. All right. Um, on kids for that matter. And here she's promoting pornography and saying, oh, huh. that's okay. Well, uh, or she said, quote, as a practicing Catholic, I'm shocked that the Catholic League, which, okay, I will admit is, you know, just slightly to the right of being this con. Okay. You're not dealing with, you know, but, you know, I'm shocked that the Catholic League is speaking out against my paid, my PETA ads. I'm doing what the Catholic Church should be doing. Working to stop senseless suffering of animals, the most defenseless of God's creation. Okay. Um, you know, again, you can do that a lot of ways without basically posing nude. Yeah, I, I, I looked at that quote. I'm doing what the Catholic Church should be doing. Yeah, that's right, because sexual sin in the Catholic Church, you know, that's... Uh, <laughs> That's just exactly what they more what they need more of, you know. They're having enough problems with that already. It's still in the news on an almost daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, not saying that any other church is, you know. I mean, there's sinners in every church. It's just because it's just been the media has really jumped on the, um, you know, all the the priests and everything. Um, I have no idea what the actual ratio is, um, but uh, you know, as as far as in the Catholic Church, the number of of problems that they've had with um, with sexual immorality versus other um, denominations or other religions, for that matter. Um, but I just thought, yeah, talk about just wanting to completely justify what you're doing and not take responsibility for any of it. <sighs> it's yep. sad. I think that, uh, it is quite sad. It is sad. So, goodbye, Joanna. We're, we're moving on here. Uh, let's talk about that... someone who's a, a bit more positive of a female role model. <laughs> uh, uh, although, this is, I mean, this is, this is, uh, uh, um, and that's Michelle Bachman. Now, Michelle Bachman is a very conservative uh, Republican legislator from Minnesota. Minnesota. Uh, she is a Wisconsin Synod Lutheran, matter of fact. I think we did a story on her a year ago where, you know, they, 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 they kind of uh, um, uh, um, lowballed her, I guess the big ter term, or submarined her by saying, uh, uh, you know, what, what's this about you, Lutheran, believing the Pope's the Antichrist? And she was just kind of caught really off guard by that question. But, um, <clears throat> so this is by, uh, 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 um, the Christian Broadcast Network. And, uh, you know, she talked very openly about her faith. Um, and, uh, um, kind of one of the, uh, if you, if you happen to be on the, the, you know, the, you know, the, the right side of things, uh, within po po political circles. Uh, she's, uh, you know, really kind of a rising star there. But, uh, um, what, now I like this. Um, uh, first off, I, I, but I have to wonder about her theology here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, keep in mind, she's a Wisconsin Synod Lutheran. So anybody who's Lutheran that understands our understanding of the doctrine of conversion, yeah. you know, Lutherans believe that um, the conversion is not a, a sort of free will kind of thing. We believe that God uh, creates faith in us through the gospel, through the sacraments, um, that it's really God is the one doing it. He, Jesus said, right. uh, you did not choose me, I chose you. Yeah, so she says that when she was 16, 
um, that she understood that she was a sinner and she needed to repent and have a savior pay for those sins. So uh, when she was 16, I went to my Lutheran altar, knelt before the altar, confessed my sins before Jesus, and asked him to come into my heart, cleanse me of my sins, so I could receive his righteousness, um, and uh, so I could live with him forever. Uh, my world changed when I was 16 years old. It was like I'd lived in darkness my entire life, and it was like a door was thrown open, and I saw the first time in the fullness of life that could be there because of this is not about this world. Um uh, <clears throat> so yeah, um, and um, I was talking with one of our pastors up here, who's a real fan of hers, and he was like, "Oh yeah, she's a Wisconsin and Lutheran." So I had to send this to him and say, um, "So what do you think about her uh, doctrine of conversion here? That it's uh, she asked Jesus into her heart. Uh, what was this a Lutheran altar call or something?" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that really kind of floored me. Like when I. I'm just picturing this because, yeah, it's it, the fact that she went and knelt before the Lutheran altar, you know, going, you have altar calls at your Wisconsin Synod Lutheran Church. <laughs> no Wisconsin Synod Lutheran Church I've ever seen. <laughs> so, or else I was thinking, all right, I, I'm trying to, you know, is this like, I want to appeal to the, you know, CBN <laughs> viewers who are mostly evangelicals <laughs> uh maybe but i you know I, i'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt I, and and here's what it comes down to it's just like you know there were times where uh president bush said something kind of off the wall theologically there's been things that president obama has said um off the wall theologically uh you you know you can go back and, and find just about every president in in recent history um at least back to carter um it seems to be when the sort of theology in the oval office has become a big thing but you know they've all kind of said goofy stuff that and you just have to chalk it up to all right, this person is a politician, not a theologian, you know, or as the, the statement was made uh, in recent years, commander in chief, not pastor in chief, you know. Are you talking yeah, about that or she's a, uh, yeah, that or she's a pietist. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, she's uh, quite conservative, however. Um, uh, she complains about, um, um, uh, President Obama being socialist. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure what that had to do with uh, Christianity, though. So, well, it's not only talking about her faith, but also her politics as well. Right, but this we is are CBI. all so we are. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, the Pat Robertson network. So, you know, again, just a little bit to the right of Genghis Khan here. So, <laughs> right, but you know, I really liked. Her uh, talking about energy policy. Um, she says, if anyone should be conserving the earth, it's believers in Jesus Christ. Because God has told us in Genesis that he's given us dominion over the earth. And so therefore we properly care for the earth. That doesn't mean that we worship the earth or that we don't right, uh, rightly use the rich resources of the earth. We do. We use them in a way that would glorify and honor the Lord. Man is here not to serve the earth. The earth is here for our benefit and to serve us. And it's a beautiful union and picture that God has given us with the earth. And I really like how she explains that. It's it's a nice saying, look, yeah, we got to take care of it. All right. God gave mm -hmm. it to us. It's a gift from him. And so, you know, it's, it's a great gift. Why would we want to, you know, ruin this great gift that he's mm -hmm. given to us? So I've I, often I, argued I, that, that creationists, people who believe in the doctrine of creation, should be the most concerned about taking care of a world that we acknowledge from the beginning is not ours. Mm -hmm. uh, that we acknowledge is a special creation of God, and that we acknowledge is the gift of God. Yep. I mean, so, yeah, I've always argued that we should be among the forefront of a very positive um, uh, uh, environmentalism. Yeah, hey, the um, mentioned on a previous episode that the guy that founded Earth Day is Missouri Synod Lutheran. Is he? I did not, I did not know. I don't remember you mentioning that. Yeah, he's a member of Joe Burnham's church. Who? Fake Jim. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I was just. That's why he doesn't sound familiar, because he speaks on here when I'm never around, so okay. Yeah, the two have never been seen in the same place at the same time. <laughs> 
Sure, sure. So uh, is his member then really happy that he now it's become a day to worship the the earth or whatever it's become? <laughs> no, not particularly. <laughs> but no, he's he's got some good things to say. Um, so um, last story. I don't have a segue, but this is kind of a bizarre story, but kind of cool at the same time. All right, this is in Boise, uh, or specifically, it's in Treasure Valley, which is presumably a Boise suburb. And uh, a Christian group, uh, specifically Boise Valley Christian Communion, uh, Pastor Monty Ralston Jr., um, is they have a program called the Grace Gift Parable Giveaway where you bring in your parking tickets and they will pay your parking tickets for you. Um, and they have uh, $10,000 to spend on covering people's parking tickets. And uh, the idea is uh, and that it's an example of how easy it is to receive God's grace. You just bring him your parking tickets and, uh, or no, I mean, um, you bring your sins to him and he forgives them. Yeah, that's what they try to do here. They, you, know, you bring in your tickets, they pay them as a picture of that. Uh, now, they want people to understand that even though people have made mistakes, forgiveness is available. Do you think that some people will, because this is a, uh, um, this looks like it's come, it's turning out to be an annual event that people will just sort of go, oh, I don't need to worry about parking tickets. I'll just hold on to them until next December and the church will pay for them for me. Some people think it's turning with God. God's job is to forgive. My job is to sin. So let's go out and sin and give God something to forgive us for. So, yeah, I guess there's always a possibility people will abuse grace. Mm-hmm. It's called antinomianism. We're actually doing a study on that uh, right now uh, because we're studying the book of Jude uh, as an online study uh, on our mm-hmm. church website. So um, it's it's been an interesting discussion. But yeah, it, and and in fact, I, I was I was digging around for some looking for uh, pictures, uh, antinomianism pictures to use. There's not a whole lot out there, um, but I found a picture of Luther listed as an antinomian. Um, oh, I could see some people having that view of Luther, uh, but you don't notice he's using these big antinomianism. Talk about the Greek snob right there, folks, right there. <laughs> these $5 words. So, uh, Antinomian, it's against the law. Those who say, well, God forgives us, so... It, you know, it's, or uh, Actually, it kind of goes like this. Well, God loves to forgive our sins. So let's sin more, so then he gets to forgive us more, and he'll be happier. <laughs> but it's not too far away from what Pope Leo the Tenth said during Luther's day. God has established the papacy. Let's enjoy it. <laughs> so God has established grace. Let's enjoy it. <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, yeah, so, uh, you know, but I, I, it is kind of a neat outreach. I'm wondering, you know, how successful they are in actually being able to reach people, you know, with the idea of the gospel. But it's a, it's a, it's a very um, um, unique and colorful outreach, I think. Yeah, and since the money was donated by area businesses and the Christian churches of the Treasure Valley. So it's not like this one church is coming up with all this money. I'm sure that they're coming up with a big chunk, but um, it's a sort of a joint effort. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's a it's a cool way that that's they're definitely gonna get the chance to get the message out. I mean, this is in the USA Today, all right. So by doing this, they are getting the gospel out, mm-hmm. all right, in in a big way. So anybody that hasn't heard before that God's forgiveness is that simple that you don't have to pay it off, you don't have to earn it or anything like that, you know. They've heard it now, or, you know, at least if they, they read the article or, or whatever, um, or if, especially if they live in that community, I'm sure that it's all over the news. Hey, get your parking tickets, you know, paid off. You know, people are going to go, why are you doing this? 
It's it's not, you know, because people expect churches to do things like help the poor, you know, stuff like that, right? They don't expect them to pay off parking tickets. That's not a something the churches are known for. So, cool yep. idea. So doing something cool different. Cool idea. Very different. Very good. Well, that's it for tonight. Um, we didn't get any feedback worth mentioning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't, did we? <laughs> no. It was standard YouTube feedback. I, I, I miss our, <laughs> I miss our, oh. our, 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 our LCMS atheist friend. You know, <laughs> he gave us good feedback. <laughs> it was very, and a couple of the others are, are, are uh, the one pastor guy who was very articulate. But oh well, yeah, that's yeah. fine. We've had a lot so, of feedback uh, lately, but this, this is the end of it. The well is dry. <laughs> So we pray and hope that God will uh, give you all a good week and a good weekend in his grace. And uh, again, thank you for listening. We do this for you on this, our 151st episode. Good night, everybody. God bless you.